Paujo, uh, thank you again for, for your mini course. Uh, and the, today we're going, we're going to have the last last lecture, right? Okay. So, can you see my presentation? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, I'd like to talk about some geometry of symmetric spaces. Um, well, there are many things to, to say. Um, let's start with curvature, for instance. So this is a nice calculation of the curvature. So, uh, um, of course, it's a local problem, so we may assume M is a locally symmetric space. It doesn't matter, yeah. But, yeah, then we also have the orthogonal evolutively algebra, right? But, yeah. We haven't discussed that. We have dis we discussed only for globally symmetric spaces. But anyway, so it also works for locally symmetric spaces. So first, uh, I want to prove a lemma. So um, let uh, x be a point x be uh, infinitesimal transvection. So recall, this means that uh, nabla x at the point x is zero, right? It's a killing field. Else. Killing vector field. And the, the one parameter group of isometries um, is uh, so these are these are called transactions. So um, so say we apply this to the point X. So we get uh, a geodesic and. Um, PT induces parallel transport along gamma also. So that, that's the story about transaction. And uh, so let, we have this transaction and then Y is any um, vector field, just a vector field defined on a neighborhood of the point X. And then we have that um, nabla x y at the point x is equal to the lead derivative at the point x. And the reason is is what we said. Uh, proof, yeah. Uh, so we have this uh, group of one parameter transactions, one parameter group of transactions, and um, so in order to compute the lead derivative at the point X, we have to use this uh, group generated by X and apply to Y and this point, so here we have y at this point, we have to translate it back here, right, using this one parameter group, and then we differentiate, right? This is the lead derivative, but this is parallel transport along gamma. 
therefore, um, we get the covariant derivative. And now we can compute the curvature using this lemma. So the curvature at the point X is equal to this new bracket at X where um, x, y, z are tangent vectors at x, and we use um, the um, infinitesimal transactions. On the right hand side. So these are killing fields. On this side we have killing fields, right? So we may also say that we just take this in P. So P is the set of infinitesimal transactions. Yeah. So um so right. So let's compute um yeah, well, let let gamma be this geodesic. Um, this initial speed, okay. And let's note that Y is a killing field. So Y restricted to gamma is it? Jacobi field. So it satisfies the Jacobi equation. Um, right. Therefore, uh, and of course, um, at zero, we have gamma prime zero is x, right? So we have, let's compute this then. So using the Jacobi equation, we have to differentiate twice y, right? At z zero. But now we can use the lemma twice. The covariant derivative is the lead derivative. So, we get two brackets here with x. Or this. And um, to, so this is a special case of the formula in the statement with uh, z equal to x, right? So to obtain the the more general formula, we can just uh, remark that uh, curvature tensor is um, completely determined by the, the sectional curvatures and, and the right hand side has the same symmetries as the curvature tensor. Okay, so that's the curvature. So um, let's now, uh, yeah, state this corollary. So let's assume now M is irreducible. So in the irreducible case, we know that um, we have this Oil algebra and B is 
a multiple of the killing form. So if we take x, y, orthonormal pair in the tangent space, uh, we can compute the sectional curvature using this expression. But now we know the curvature tensor. Well, we know that, um, yeah. We know that B is lambda times the killing form. We know the curvature tensor here. And now uh, we can cancel the minus sign. And we can uh, use adding variance of the killing form to move the bracket to the other side. So what, what, what can we see from this formula? Well, <clears throat> We can see that um, uh, well, this is B, right? Uh, no, wait. Yeah. Um, uh, what I'm saying. Right, right. Um, this bracket is in K, right? Because X and Y are in P. The bracket is in K. And the killing form is negative definite. Okay. Therefore, um, this curvature is non negative if lambda is um, negative and non positive if lambda is positive. So um, the first case, um, if you recall, lambda is negative. Lambda negative means, this is positive, right? Means that the killing form is negative from P. So this is uh, the case of a symmetric space of compact type. And this is lambda positive is non-compact type. So symmetric spaces of compact type has have non-negative curvature, sectional curvature, and symmetric spaces of non-compact type have non-positive sectional curvature. Okay. It's also easy to use this calculation to compute the Ricci curvature to see that uh, the Ricci curvature uh, in the ir irreducible case is um, a multiple of the metric. So um, irreducible symmetric space is an Einstein manifold. Okay. Okay, that's enough for the curvature. Um, let's move move to totally geodesic submanifolds. OK. 
Okay. Well, if M is a locally or globally symmetric space, and M is a totally geodesic submanifold of M, then M is also symmetric space. This is obvious, right? Because um, if you take a point in the submanifold and um, take the geodesic symmetry of M at X, it's, it's an isometry, right? Of M. And preserves M. Because it's the geodesic reflection, the geodesic um, Yeah, so, um, so M is generated by all geodesics from X, right? So if I reflect this geodesic, um, get a point still in the submanifold. So the geodesic symmetry preserves the submanifold, so it induces uh, an isometry. It will be the, so this will be the geodesic reflection at X relative to N, okay, to be an isometer then. And, And we have a complete description mm, of total geodesics and manifolds now. Let M be a symmetric space. Let's consider the global case. Then the connected complete totally geodesic submanifolds of M passing through a point X in M are precisely of the form exp of s applied to x where s is uh, so called uh lead triple system Meaning that uh, the Lee bracket, triple Lee bracket, yeah, of S is containing S, yeah. Well, maybe I, I just say that uh, you remember the the formula for the curvature, right? So if we have a total geodesic submanifold, then the curvature tensor of M restricts to the submanifold. Therefore, it must be a triple system. 
And conversely, if we have a literal system, um, we can take, this is um, Lisa bound of G and we can take the associated uh, connected group and its orbit through the base point will be a total geodesic submanifold. Okay. Um, now, more important uh, are flat total geodesic submanifolds. So, definition a complete connected flat total geodesic uh, flat. Submanifold of M is called the flat of M. And so we see from our discussion that um, flats of M through point base point are in bijection with literal systems where well the curvature is zero right so um, uh, we want so what we want are a subspaces with a bracket a zero so these are precisely well yeah and then we can take maximal flats of m through x in the sense they are not contained properly contained in another flat so they so this corresponds to maximal abelian subspaces of p so cartan subspaces so this flats will be like um this flats will be of this form X of A apply to X. And um, if so, so this can be uh, either a torus, compact torus, in case M is compact type, or uh, diffeomorphic. Well, just Euclidean space, really, isometric, yeah. Take Euclidean space, is M is um, non-compact type. Okay, yeah. So, the geometry flats is very interesting. Um, um, yeah, but um, there are many things about flats, but uh, I want to talk about uh, the conjugate locus, conjugate points. So just recall that um, any any two Cartier subspaces of P are at K conjugate, right? 
Therefore, any two maximal flats of M are conjugate under the isotropy representation. Sorry, isotropy action of K. And in particular, they have the same dimension, and this is called the rank of the symmetric space. Right. So, for instance, uh, symmetric spaces of rank one are precisely the spheres in the projective spaces in the compact for compact type and projective space of real complex quaternionic octonionic projective spaces and, and then uh, the Cartan duals also have rank one. Uh, right. Those are hyperbolic spaces. Okay, so let, let's talk about the, the conjugate locus then. So there is a very precise description of uh, the conjugate locus in a symmetric space using the system of restricted roots. So, symmetric space is a homogeneous manifold, so it's enough to, to study the conjugate locus of the base point X, okay? So, we write M as a homogeneous space where um, we have this um, base point X, so it's, it's enough to describe the conjugate locus of the base point. And moreover, um, if, if we have a flat here, I mean, we have a flat, we have a geodesic. Every geodesic uh, starting at the base point can be uh, moved using K to a geodesic inside the flat, okay? So the conjugate locus of X is, is K invariant. And any point of M is conjugated under K to a point in the, in the maximal flat. And this is the maximal flat. So it's enough to describe um, the conjugate locus along geodesics entirely contained in the maximal flat. So we need to solve the Jacob equation. But the Jacob equation, we have already mentioned that it has constant coefficients in a suitable reference frame, right? So we can, I mean, yeah, this is the Jacob equation. along gamma. So if we write uh, this vector field along gamma, is a linear combination of, so EI is a parallel orthonormal frame. And we can see that um, if you substitute into this equation, you differentiate, R is parallel, so, yeah. So, if you compute 
are on a longer autonomous frame. It's constant, right? So um, we can just um, diagonalize the Jacobi operator, say, gamma prime at zero is u, and we have this Jacobi operator. Uh, no, the other way around, I think, uh, wait, yeah, um, right, for, Um, yeah, then we have um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And uh, Jacob equation splits into independent uh, ODEs. So here uh, we have to pay attention, of course, to the sign of this lambda i, right? So for compact type, they will be, wait, for compact type, they will be positive. Yeah. And for non-compact type, they'll be negative. And then we have uh, the solutions here. Um, something like this. Jacobi fields along gamma. So this, these are cosine and sine or cos hyperbolic cosine or hyperbolic sine depending on the sine of lambda i, okay? So we have explicitly a Jacobi field, so we can figure out uh, where they vanish and so on. So I, I, of course, I don't have time to go through details here. We have everything in the notes. Let me just draw a diagram to, to get a feeling for this. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to consider this symmetric space. Remember, um, the evolution is given like this, right? So it's rank two. Here, um, SU3 is eight dimensional. SO3 is three dimensional. Here we have an R5. And this R5 really as a representation of SO3 is um, symmetric uh, product, traceless. 
okay? And so here we have symmetric matrices and yeah, we can also view these as symmetric matrices. Three by three, traceless. So if, if we take uh, that diagonal matrices, this is a Cartesian subspace. So trace is zero, right? So dimension of A is two, so this is rank two. Um, right. Rank, so, so, rank of M is equal to rank of G, as SU3, right? So this is a so-called space of maximal rank. Also, and so the restricted roots, they essentially are um the the roots of g that you know very well right so the only difference are the the multiplicities so here we are in case uh, of a2 then right so we have this um, picture this is a picture on the Lie algebra but on the Lie group level, um, it's more like this. So, Right. So, um, what we can say now, well, this triangle is like the Cartan polyhedron for the symmetric space. Every point of the symmetric space is, um, Um, conjugated under K to a, to a point here in this triangle. But we can be more explicit. I mean, of course, this, this um, point here is zero, corresponds, exponentiates to the identity matrix, right? At this point here, um, I can write the matrix, it will be like this, pi i over three, pi, let me write more, yeah. Okay, this point correspond to this matrix. And this point, this point corresponds to this one. Okay, you see, um, because the roots are like eta one minus theta two and theta one. So this root vanishes on this matrix corresponding to this hyperplane here. And this hyperplane here corresponds to theta two minus theta three, right? The same roots as SU three. And now um, this point, is the sum of these two matrices. So it's pi i zero and minus pi i. 
And it's interesting because this point exponentiates to what? To minus one, one, and uh, minus one, which is a matrix in SO3. Okay. Therefore, in the symmetric space, it's um, it's it's the base point again, right? So I mean, these two points correspond to the base point. So what what we can see um, from this picture, well, similarly, similarly, these points here will also exponentiate in the symmetric space to the base point. So what we can see from this picture is the cut locus of the base point. So we have to take um, equidistant points here and here and here. So this is the cut locus. So the cut locus along the, the maximal flat. But the, we, we can prove the, the cut locus is also K invariant and it's it's enough to, to consider the cut locus along the maximal flat. And if you compare this cut locus with the Jacobi equation, the conjugate locus, we see that, that they coincide. The, the first conjugate locus coincides with the cut locus. for a simply connected symmetric space is a general result first proved maybe in the 60s um, right Yeah. Well, I have what? Um, 15 minutes more. 15. Yeah. Pajo, what about uh, the cut locus when for non, non simply connected? Ah, good connected point. Space. Yeah. Well, the conjugate locus doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. It will be the same. The cut locus, uh, like this here and projective space, for instance. But, Right, I mean, um, here, um, in tipo del point, it's cut locus and conjugate first conjugate locus, and it gives a projective space. The conjugate locus is closer, the, the cut locus is closer, right? So, in general, I don't know, um, it will be. I mean, you know exactly what are the quotients of symmetric spaces, which are also symmetric spaces, right? And, but I'm, I don't know if, if this has been uh, made explicit. I, I don't know. Okay. I have thought about that, but... But in general, in, in general um, they won't coincide. Yeah. yeah, maybe never. Yeah, that, that some uh, some some lattice appears inside the, which in the case of simply connected is doesn't appear, but some some lattice appears in the. Yeah, the there are many lattices involved here. Yeah, especially yeah, if you want to compute the cut law, because there, there are many lattices involved here. Yeah. 
Okay, well, I could talk about uh, isometric actions, though. I think it will be more interesting uh, to finish this uh, discussion. Isometric actions on symmetric spaces. Well, um, right. So there's this famous uh, Bot Samuelson paper, right? 1958. They introduced this notion of variational completeness for uh, an isometric action. This means that um, uh, means that the action produces um, enough Jacobi fields. along geodesics. Remember that uh, um, if you differentiate the action, you get an action of the Lie algebra. Um, the Lie algebra act by killing fields, right? And killing field restricted along the geodesic is, is a Jacobi field, is a Jacobi field. But for uh, variational completeness means that we get enough Jacobi fields from the actions, in, enough to determine the multiplicities. Of the focal points. to the orbits. So say we have an orbit here. And we have a focal point there. So what's a focal point? Is a critical value of exponential map, normal exponential map. And then uh, we have um, a variation of the geodesic through geodesics orthogonal. To n, and this these geodesics they don't have necessarily to meet at q, but they meet infinitesimally up to first order, right? Infinitesimally they, they meet there, meaning that uh, the variational vector field is a Jacobi field um, that um, vanishes. At this point, so this is this is the situation when we have a focal point. So we may may have a, it has a multiplicity. So that's the number of linearly independent uh, Jacobi fields here. Now, the action is called variational variationally complete if we never we never we have a Jacobi field like this. It is of the form, it is of this form. So the killing field in, induced for some element in the Lie algebra. Right. 
So in a sense, if you go to the orbit space, you don't see conjugate points anymore. It's more or less like this, right? Because this is not um, a manifold, of course, in general. So they introduced this um, concept and what Samuelson proved that uh, decay action, on, so that's the isotropy action, also the great times k action on G, um, where k, uh, one factor is acting by left translation, the other by right translations, and the linear isotropy representation so, assuming that this is a symmetric space, right? So these three are variationally complete. And then they use this to compute the homology and cohomology of Lie groups and symmetric spaces. It's a very nice paper. And that was in 1958. In 1971, Conlon, who was a PhD student of Bond, he noticed that this, these three actions, uh, they, they shared another property. They are hyperpolar in modern terminology. And he proved that uh, this is sufficient for variational completeness. So what's the meaning of hyperpolar? Hyperpolar means that um, there exists um, um, It's a manifold sigma of M that meets all G orbits and meets them always orthogonally. And in fact, this would be polar, hyperpolar. Um, we need also that submanifold this flat. So that's the situation for symmetric spaces for these three actions. Here, we just take um, a maximum flat. Here we take. Uh, Cartier subspace. And here we have to um, well lift the the maximum flat to G. So yeah. It will be the same also here. Um, and then um, later, uh, Herman, it was 1960, I said. Well, yeah, Herman came before Colin in 1960, Herman. He considered uh, two symmetric subgroups. And proved that um, 
the H action on G mod K is variationally complete. So this was before column, but then column notice, in fact, that um, this is also hyperpolar. So um, there are many hyperpolar actions on symmetric spaces. And um, of course, um, if, if we take a homogeneity one action, it's hyperpolar. The principal orbits have co dimension one, and take a normal geodesic, will be a section, and it's also flat. So Kouros, Andreas Kouros, in his PhD thesis, published in 2002, classified hyperpolar actions on irreducible symmetric spaces. So he, he proved that every hyperpolar action on an irreducible symmetric space of compact type is either a Hermann action or homogeneity one up to orbit equivalence. I mean, up to replacing the action by another action with the same orbits. And, and this thing is still going on. I mean, people are studying hyperpolar actions on symmetric spaces of non-compact type, on reducible symmetric spaces and so on, okay? Just mention a result of mine with Torbeckson. also the same year, 2002. Um, we proved that um, a variation and complete action on a compact symmetric space is hyperpolar. So at least uh, for compact symmetric spaces, the, the classes are are the same. And um, yeah, so I'm going to stop here. Okay. Thank you very much, Claudio. Well, I have one question, but I'm open for anyone who wants to make a question first. If anyone wants to make questions, just pick up the mic or raise your hand. Okay, nobody did. So, Carl, just some, well, that point you are right now, that interpretation you gave about variationally complete, can, can you explain it again? You said you can think of morally something as, as the quotient not having conjugate point. Yeah. Um, um, because they are all contained in the G actions somehow. All gener right. generated by the, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, See, if you have, if you have, well, well, 
this is almost like um, Riemannian submersion, right? This projection. And you have this horizontal geodesic gamma here. And the index is the sum of the um, conjugate points, yeah. Okay. With contact with multiplicities. And, and in general, you can split the index into the horizontal part and the vertical part. And the horizontal index corresponds to the conjugate points in the quotient. And the vertical part um, comes from from the action, right? If you mm -hmm. if you start from a principal orbit and go to a singular orbit, then necessarily this will be a focal point because the isotopy group here moves, gives a variation. Mm -hmm. So this kind of focal point contributes to the vertical index. Okay. So what we are saying here in case of variational completeness is that everything comes from the vertical part. Uh, so there are no, there, the horizontal index is zero. So essentially there are no conjugate points in the quotient, yeah. Okay. And how does that relate to the, your notes? I, I have had seen this other notion of variationally complete. I'm not finding it right, but the- Other notion? The, uh, not other notion, it's, it's an example. I think it's an example you give first. Uh, I think the same thing, but just just to make make things clear for me, I should have. In the notes, I said something. I wrote something in the notes. Yeah, I'm 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 trying to find it here. Uh, uh, thoughtness, you mean relation to thoughtness? No, no. Uh, Cycles. I'm not finding ads. Ah, uh, page, page 46. Uh, proposition three, three, four, one. Three, four, one? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, very sure complete is this. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, this is a special case. It's always like that. It's a special case. Because yeah, it, it, this it, is for it, conjugate points only, right? So yeah, right. This is nice. This is I can explain very easily here. Maybe um, this is in a symmetric space. This is for just special case for one point. Yeah. Only. So this is the base point. So what's the orbit of the base point? It's just the base point because this is a isotopy group, right? So it is an orbit, but it's a fixed point also. It's an orbit of K. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, a focal point will be a conjugate point here. Okay. Uh. Then we have what? We have a Jacobi field vanishing at the end points. And, um, right, so say, suppose this, so this is gamma at zero, this is gamma at one, and suppose this is um, the maximum value. It vanishes, right? So um, maximum value of the norm of J. happens at this point, okay? Then um, this implies that J prime at T zero is zero.
which means that um, um, yeah um, right um, okay now take um x infinitesimal transaction let's say take x infinitesimal transaction at um at this point with the value at this point to be equal to j. Then it's an infinitesimal transaction at this point means that this covariant derivative is zero. But this is also j prime of t0. Now, x restricted to gamma is a Kobe field. And um, it coincides with the initial conditions coincide with j. Therefore, um, it's equal to J. So we have proved that um, this Jacobi field producing conjugate point is induced by a killing field. So that's variational completeness in this okay. special case. Okay, oh, that, that's nice. I, um, yeah. I want to fit the ideas better. Yeah, yeah, I should have. It's good that you asked, yeah, because this is easy to, to prove, right, in this case. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Leonardo is raising his hand. So, okay. Uh, Claudio, uh, I'm not so familiar with this, all this theory of symmetric space. <laughs> so for me, these lectures, it, it's a, a very... Uh, a good opportunity to 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 have contact with these these things. Uh, I have a question. Uh, as you talk, told about the Bot Samuelson paper, and there is a appendix in in one of your articles uh, with Torbergson that you mentioned that these uh, cycles of Bot Samuelson uh, coincide with the real cells of the the real flag manifolds. Uh, so could you talk up something about this? Uh, I, I, <laughs> Probably to, to have a picture of uh, this relation. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know what they're talking about, but uh, <laughs> I don't remember. Okay, okay that's fine. <laughs> I mean, um, how do we prove that, right? Um, I, I think, uh, well, yeah, I really don't remember how we proved that. I mean, in fact, we... I remember there was a, a paper by... I mean, we, we generalized some proof. There was already some proof, I think, for the complex case, or... Like, you know, maybe, this guy called Hans. Yeah, yeah. We, we we adapt we generalize his proofs mm. somehow, but um, okay, yeah. I think we we what we do we have explicit uh, the explicit construction of Bot and Samuels from there, and um, <laughs> um, 
No, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Sorry. Okay, I I I thought that the, your paper it's it's written, but uh, uh, it's only to to get the the idea that you present today if some if the relation between these things. But okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's the idea? Well. A good point, yeah. Um, how, how, how are your flag manifolds uh, and maybe seen inside this, uh, this general context of symmetric spaces and be applied the, the, the this construction of both Samson. The, the question is like that, almost like that. Mm -hmm. Like we have. Uh... Uh... So this is this is a. Uh flag manifold, right? It's um, meeting the the flat here and take a distance function. You can see six critical points. In both Samson, they will construct one cycle for each mm. critical point. And each one of those will have a different dimension, right? Depending, I mean, for instance, here, so say for the same symmetric space we're talking before, the multiplicities are one. So here we have, um, so this is point of minimum in disk zero. So here is one, crosses ones here, this is two, this is one, this is two, and this is three. So we have six cycles, in, and that's also the right number of Brouat cells, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the right dimensions, too. Yeah. But I really don't remember how... Yeah. You can ask him later by email. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. Ask, we can, I'll ask we can keep, Yeah. <laughs> other okay, questions I'll ask by email. That, I think the idea was to, to, to exactly this, to bring up these questions. So at least for me, uh, I, as I said in the first first lecture, um, I, I feel that I should be more familiar with metric space, given that the... Uh, what I know about the theory of fragments is mostly live with, it seems we live in the people with deal with which deal with fragments live in a world, the symmetric space in another world. And but I think symmetric spaces are much easier than flag manifolds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. And they can they can they can illuminate each other. Like for example Koshava Kotov's paper. Yeah. So, right. So I hope hope next next uh, event we we also have some maybe we have some other mini course on metric space or other aspects. Um, at, at least I'm I'm willing to to learn more. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I I sent a uh, uh, revised. Uh, Right. Ah, you, you said, I, I, yes, I was going to ask you that. I, I sent right now the last version you sent me today well, I, I, I during still, the talk. I may still do some changes, yeah. maybe. So the, 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 the group, uh, the WhatsApp group we, we created to communicate for the first, it, it, will, it will be active after the Congress ends. So if you want to send me some other improvement, I can send there. Yeah, so, okay. Um, 
let us wait like one or two days then because uh, I, I didn't have time to go through all. Of course. Hmm. Yeah. No, no need to hurry. Yeah. Any, anyone wants to make another question? So let's thank Claudia again. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. For the mini cars, for the lecture notes. Yes. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank very much. And for presence here. Mm -hmm. Yeah.